pair of speakers that run on 5 volt to USB when you've lost the power supply or in this case bought them really cheap from uh, cash converters because something to do. Step one, take all the screws out and a, well step before that is to find yourself a USB cable. This was a printer cable which I've stripped the end off, cut off the two data wires down here and just left the uh, 5 volt on ground which will go into the underside of that socket and then with these ones you just kind of once your screws are out you kind of just grab it and just carefully pry out and that leads you in to everything in here so our DC socket is there on the board that's a passive radiator which basically means it's a speaker without a magnet and a voice coil it's just the cone. Um, it's supposed to help with um, low frequency bass without requiring a bass port um, some people prefer that sound some people don't but um, it kinda looks impressive because it looks like there's two speakers from the front but unless you know what you're looking at you can kinda go mmm okay but anyway they tend to use it as a misleading thing as well but anyway so yeah, I'm doing this freehand at the moment, I'm sorry. Uh, kind of impromptu, I want to make a video about doing something. So, that's our, that's our socket here. And just as a rough guess, I'm going to say that... Can we see that? As a rough guess, I'm going to say the bottom pin is our 5 volt and these two here are our grounds or returns so what I'll do is just sort of have a look at the rough design of that socket doesn't do autofocus much does it? anyway so but yeah so the back of that socket the pin is the bottom one so what I'll do see if we can find a way to get that cable through the through here and then we'll sort of go from there what I might actually do is take that socket out all together so I've got my soldering iron just get him warmed up to about 300 350 degrees C and uh, I'll pull that socket out now this is probably going to be lead free solder because of the age of this thing so it might give me a little bit of a fight but I'll get it out and <clears throat> that'll give us somewhere to put the cable through because it is thick enough that I reckon it, it'll, it'll fill up that DC jack hole quite well. If it doesn't, I'll probably have to hunt down some hot glue and just fill it up. So, just down here. But yeah. Now, the way to get um, your lead free solder stuff to re wet properly is to use um, lead based solder. Now, as long as you're not eating this stuff, it's not going to kill you. Um, it does make a much better uh, electrical connection though. Um, so what we're going to do is use that to remove those. Um, and I'll work it out with my fingers and then uh, once it's out, we'll see if we can feed that cable through and see how it's going to go. Now by taking a bit of a look at this socket now I've got it off, <clears throat> we can see that the rear pin is the center pin, which in the speaker's case is the positive. You've got this one here, which goes to internally I think that one you've got two it won't really it really doesn't like focusing on such tiny things does it anyway so you've got that pin this one here at the front and you've got the one there they're both grounds so pretty much what I'm going to do is put the red one in the hole this back one came out of that'll give us that positive then other of these two should provide us our grounds but we'll try and see what happens so now we've got our cable coming through the hole at the back of the speaker here. It turned out it's perfect sized. So it's blocking the hole quite nice and tight. Um, you've also got at the front here, I've got a, um, a knot in the cable so that it can't be pulled through. And then I've got it soldered down onto, onto the board. So you've got your positive up there in the corner. I've got the negative just going to this one here. It is a little bit scratchy, but that's pretty cause I'm soldering leaded on top of lead free, but it's kind of just being lazy today.
We'll just see if it's going to work. So now I'll slap it back together and see if she powers up. Now that's done, just got to finish putting all the screws back in. She's a bit tight closing it because that, um, that socket was on the top side of the board and not the bottom where I've soldered to. So I've had to sort of snake it around the side of the board because that cable is a touch thicker than the uh, cables internal inside this thing. Um, yeah, just had to use a little bit of brute force. Um, and then just make sure that it stays, um, well, make sure it still works, I'm not shorting out the USB port, which it's not, so that's good. Um, that's the cable coming out there now. So she is, she is slightly thick. Um, but with this setup like this, if you've got a, um, a dual output power bank or something like that, you can actually plug these into one side, a Bluetooth receiver on the other side, um, and then, well, yeah, you've turned it into a set of Bluetooth speakers, more or less. Um, I was contemplating in installing a Bluetooth receiver into the inside of this, but, nah. Just use them as three and a half mil ones for now. I mean, I can, I've got a spare Bluetooth receiver. It's from one of, you, you would have seen it in one of my other videos. Um, all right, so now I've managed to lose one of the screws, but it doesn't matter. We're here for testing now. So we're plugging that into there. We've now got power and left and right. So that's left and that's right. Left, right. Cool. So it's working. Sweet as. There you go. Five dollar speakers now working again. I could hook them up to the side of a television or um, to the laptop or something and basically rebirth something that would have otherwise ended up in the bin, which no one likes. So, she's all sweet. Um, the only downside is, well, this wants one and a half amps at five volt, which means to power it up properly, you probably should use um, either uh, an iPad charger or um, a modern Android charger, something that can do one and a half to two amps. I mean, it'd run at one amp. Um, most of your switch mode power supplies are self-regulating anyway, it just means that it had run out of power beforehand. But um, this thing's running a Class D module internally by the looks of it, so um, yeah, well what's that, 7.5 amps, no 7.5 watts, so you're looking at about 3.5 three watts a channel um, peak driven, so not too bad. Um, I've seen the chip before, I've used it in um, another project. Uh, they're, they're, they're quite nice, they're easy to drive, and they seem to handle these sorts of things quite well. No good as headphone amps though, because the two outputs have to remain independent, because of the way they're driven. Um, but otherwise, you know, 3 watts a channel, 5 volt, no dramas. I reckon you could probably drive these a little bit harder, <clears throat> maybe up to 6 or 7 volt, but you might be pushing the limits of that, that I see, I think. But anyway, she's all good. Thanks for watching anyway. See ya.